We have uh, a clip from uh, one of the stars of Blackish, I think the TV show that uh, came to my attention. Uh, it's a it's a crazed clip. Her name's Jennifer Lewis. Jennifer Lewis, and <laughs> I I find this time we're living in sort of um, it's it's mind warping what what people think. But this is uh, oh, this is her take on I saw this, uh, this is her take on Trump, and then later she went on to explain that he was going to round up black people. <laughs> Which I enjoy. <laughs> I don't know how it works to. to I, I, I don't know how practically it works to round up black people, put them where, and then I don't know what you get out of it. But uh, this is her on a podcast. As soon as he takes the oath, he will have generals walk down the steps of the Capitol. <laughs> he will take a hammer and break the glass where the Constitution is, and he will tear it up in our faces. Mm. Mm. And say now, I'm the king of the fucking world. <laughs> Hold on, pause it for a second. Of the world. I've said a million times, my favorite part of life is not the person who's crazy, it's the person who's next to <laughs> him going, mm. <laughs> instead of what? What are you fucking nuts? Zerlina. <laughs> Zerlina, yes, we know her from MSNBC. Oh my God. Sorry, go ahead. Faces. Mm. Mm. And say now, mm. I'm the king of the fucking world. Mm. Of the world. The world. You will bow down, bitches. <laughs> mm. He will punish everybody that didn't vote for him. Let me tell y'all how I know this shit. <laughs> I know it because I know what mental illness looks like. All right. Clearly you do. She found a mirror. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that mania is unstoppable. See, this motherfucker's Hitler. Mm. Mm. Hitler. Mm. He didn't come to play. Mm. I wonder if Hitler golfed a lot. <laughs> I never saw any footage of him golfing, so I, I don't know. Just that yeah. alone. You can't yeah. compare anyone to... To Trump, who doesn't golf a lot. Yeah, between that myth and whatever Hitler was doing, I don't but think Trump is it, in it. Okay, so now it's comical. Uh, yeah, it's insane. And, and it's insane. And you go, oh, this bitch is crazy. But on the other hand, you go, well, her brain has been poisoned. I mean, every time she turns on MSNBC or CNN... She gets fed a steady diet of racist society and systemic racism and target on your back and people hate you because you're black. And uh, I don't know. And, and there's always the talk. You know, you have to have the talk with your young black kids about cops and about getting shot and everything else. And if I grew up on a steady diet of this and I didn't hear any other opinions, then maybe my brain would be poisoned. Well, if she was 13... Yeah. I'd say maybe that makes sense. That's a grown woman. She grown. She mm. been around for a long period of time. Donald Trump was the president at one point. It's not like we don't know what he would do as president. He didn't tear the Constitution when he was the president for the first four years he served. So, I mean, how stupid do you have to be to even believe half of that? I mean, just even if you believed it or even if CNN told you or whatever news network told you that, how do you walk that out in your mind as something that can actually happen? You think he can tear a con like the the Constitution is only valid if it's on a piece of paper. So somebody tear it, right. they could just er eradicate the Constitution. That just makes no sense whatsoever. Rounding up people and and, and and saying making people bow down to him. I mean, he got investigated for the first three years of his career. His attorney general was MIA. He had recused himself. I mean, everybody turned on him. Donald Trump did not have it easy in four years. Where is the dictatorship in the Hitler-esque uh, mentality or even the way to present that in the United States of America? It just doesn't exist. The lady is nuts. Uh, do you have the quote, by the way? Yeah, so speaking of various minority groups, she also added, that motherfucker will have <laughs> us in camps because we sat our fat asses on the couch. Mm. <laughs> oh, you didn't vote. Right. And then uh, because you didn't vote, then Trump got elected and then he's going to make camps. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm. And uh, so about, you know, obviously, I feel like the black community is waking up 
to the extent that you can only lie for so long before something's got to come out the other side. Like you can only talk so much about what you're going to do for a community and nothing happens right. before that community starts to wake up and kind of go, maybe nothing's coming out the other end. I think that's I think that's true. You would hope that more people would wake up sooner. I don't think the Democrats have ever done anything for black people ever. And even the things that they're proposing is irrational. There's no way they're going to give reparations. How, if you gave every black person, 40 million black people in America, give or take, you give everybody $1,000. I mean, you're probably in like trillion dollars in debt in the country. Where are we going to get it from? Are you telling me that the ancestors of black people who have paid taxes all these years are going to pay reparations to black people? It's completely stupid to think that they can do it anyway. But the promise is a dead promise that they're never accomplishing. They say to black people, we're going to change the inner city and we're going to make the rich people pay their fair share. That's never going to happen. Rich people are never going to pay what they call fair share of taxes. Then they would have to change the tax laws and then they wouldn't be able to take advantage of the same laws. Yeah, well, see, I think the whole thing is fundamentally flawed. Like saying, hey, group who isn't doing well, I'm going to give you a bunch of free shit. No. That does not work. I mean, there's a story, and I'll, I'll butcher it a little, but there were... Uh, Folks, natives, I guess you would say, back in the day, and they lived on Bikini Island. And they're just an indigenous tribe, group of people who lived on this island. And, uh, you know, they hunted and they fished and they, they did what you do. And they were kind of lean and mean because <laughs> you had to be. And then the United States said, we want to test an atom bomb and we want to <laughs> see what it does to an island. <laughs> so they said, uh, we're going to move you all off this island. We're going to pack it up. We're going to move it off. Uh, and we'll move you to another island. And then the people from Bikini Island went, well, I don't know. That's our island. What do we get out of this? And they said, oh, well, we'll set up some pool tables and give you some beer. And we'll give you some guaranteed income. You won't have to work or anything. We're going to blow up your island. We'll move you over there. They all just got fat and got diabetes. They all became alcoholics mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. they didn't have to go hunt. Yeah. every day and fish every day and, and live every day. So just the notion of giving people free stuff in terms of helping them along. If I said, uh, oh, you know, if you had a 25-year-old son who was struggling and he has a little bit of an addiction issue and alcohol and he's, he's not really motivated and whatever, and I said, oh, I'm going to help him. I'll give him 500 grand <laughs> as his dad. Everyone would go, that's the worst idea ever. He's going to do worse. Right. Right, so that's the that's the micro version of free shit. Everyone understands the nepotism and the babies of the rich guys all just sliding into addiction and <laughs> you know and and beyond. Um, if you do it for a whole group, you're going to hurt the group. Freebies are you really it, it it's it's really an irresponsible, dangerous game to play with groups. And the the groups that do the best are the groups who don't consider themselves a group. Right. And never say to the politicians, what's in it for us? It's always the ones who just put their head down and go to work. Right. The problem with the black community is they look at themselves as a group, and then they anoint leaders who are interested in cashing checks but not really helping them. As a matter of fact, if they help them, then they're kind of out of a job if the group gets better. And then they just perpetually talk about what they're going to do for the group. And while they're talking about what they're going to do, for the group in a positive way, they have to sprinkle in a lot of negativity about what the other group wants to do to mm -hmm. that group if we let them, if we put them in charge, and they're going to hurt that group. The reality is, is you're an individual, you can do whatever you want, make some hay while the sun is shining, and everyone get to work. That's the only message that should ever be given, but it's a constant group thing, and it's hurtful. I think pride is hurtful. Mm -hmm. I think everyone talks, I think we talk way too much about race and, and identity and groups. And, and, it, and by the way, the groups could be LGBT, whatever. You could be lesbian. You could be trans. You could whatever. All the groups that get broken off, nothing ever happens, always promises to help them. Nothing comes out the other end. And I feel like black men especially are starting. I mean, statistically, they're, they're shifting. They're kind of waking up. And it's, it's kind of happening. Yeah, I agree a thousand percent. It's like, because 
not just I agree because I feel like it. Like you said, you're referencing the polls and statistics are showing that black men are increasingly leaving the Democrat Party and waking up to what's going on, which is exciting to a certain degree. You know, when you go back to the group thing, unfortunately, in America, there's this group of black people. Right. And they hate each other and they kill each other and they rob each other and they pull each other down. But yet they still claim to be a group. And right. then they have people who are detached from the group that just happen to look like them representing the group. And those people want nothing to do with the group. They just leverage the group to make money. And they make as much money and they have as many grievances as they can. And they never care about what's happening with the group. Someone outside the group or within the group that that rise out says, stop babying these people. Hold them accountable. Tell the truth. Educate them and, it, uh, uh, you know, I would say inform them that you don't have to be a group anymore to make it in America. That person, which would be like a person like me, you get Sean, you're Uncle Tom, you're working for the white man and all of the above. I can show them my lifestyle and say, look, I'm an example of what I'm trying to tell you. It is irrelevant. And it's unfortunate that that is perpetuated. The Democrats know that the ignorance is pervasive. And they just attack it because emotions are something that people connect with more so than fact, facts and reality. I often wonder, are these news outlets hypnotizing people? I, I got to do more research on this because, you know, there's a level of hypnotism, which means that, you know, we, we think of the general hypnotism where you have the little pendulum swinging, mm -hmm. whatever the little thing. And then a person is hypnotized. You tell them, go left, go right. I wonder, is there some of like a micro hypnotism or a smaller level of hypnotism, like a like a first phase hypnotism, which means that a person is kind of being hypnotized. They still are functional. But in their subconscious, it's just downloading this information. And if they keep going to these news outlets night after night, they're in this constant state of like a soft hypnotism. And they can't. And that lady can't. She actually believes that. Maybe, you know, well, that's what I think. I, I, you know, she believes it, but if you said to her, uh, you know, are you a homeowner? And she said, yeah, I got a nice place in Sherman Oaks. I go, all right. If, if Trump is elected and he walks down the steps and takes a ball-peen hammer to the Constitution <laughs> and then tears it in half and um, rounds up black people and puts them in a camp uh, – I will give you an island in Bermuda. I will, you can trade that house, but if he doesn't, I got to take your house. She wouldn't do it. No. So, so does it's like when Cher and all the other blowhard celebrities go, if Donald Trump is elected, I'm moving to Canada because I don't want to live in the United States with this guy in charge, right? There's always 10 prominent <laughs> blowhard celebrities who make that proclamation. And, and by the way, it's coming soon. We only have another few months before Cher and all the other idiots get on board and make this proclamation. Then what happens? Trump gets elected, and they go right back to their state in Malibu. Right. And they never go to Canada. So do they believe it? I don't, I don't think she believes it's it. It's hard to tell. It's hard to tell because there are people who struggle, and I think it should be diagnosed, Trump derangement syndrome. Yes. Some people really, and you can confront her and, and make the same scenario that you just said. She would probably say, yeah, yeah, I'll do it. Yeah, I, I, I'll agree to it. And then, of course, it never happens, and then she, she hides off in the night. I, I wonder, Adam, do people, you know, because I think that we're right on the, on the conservative side. I think that we're right. I think that we have evidence and facts to back up our genuineness. I think these people are nuts. They're crazy. They hate God. They hate America. They hate the Constitution. Oh, they hate their dad. Exactly. That's or, the main thing. Because they don't know him or, or he, he was or a terrible whatever. One. They hate their dad, and then everyone becomes a fill-in for their dad. Right. So God and Trump is just a caricature. He's like built in the lab as the dad all these people hate him. Right. That's all. Big, blowhard, <laughs> hair, the whole thing. He, he's like literally, this is like a social experiment. Mm. If he, if if Trump looked like Dustin Hoffman, I don't think they'd be out of their mind. He's literally a cartoon character mm. of the man. Yeah, He is <laughs> the man. And they rage against the man. And he's right. the ultimate the man. 
Yeah, that that I can see that happening, but it's definitely something. It's not something where we're just projecting this. It, these people are nuts. They're insane. I think I think Joe Biden is completely mindless. He's he's not adequate to be the president. He's probably got a slight level of dementia going on. He's a terrible. His policies are terrible. I don't think he's running anything in the country. But I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't compare him to Hitler. Yeah. Why, no. No. I, nobody I, would ever say anything like that on on the side of reasonableness. I mean, the guy could be stupid and he can destroy America through policy and the lack thereof enforcing border security and things like that. But I would never go so far to say he's going to destroy the Constitution and put us in internment camps and whatever the case may be. So are, do they really believe it? Are they being ultra superfluous? It's almost impossible to know. Yeah. Well, it's called the syndrome. Yeah. And it's called deranged, right, right, <laughs> and, right. and they got it. And first, you have to be a narcissist. That's right. the part I figured out. You, you, you won't get it if you're not a narcissist. There are plenty of people that just go, I, "I'm not voting Trump. I disagree with his, whatever he has to say." But they're not insane. Right. You, and you have to be a narcissist to be insane. That's that's how it works. Yeah, it's it's interesting, and it's also the thing that's interesting about these people with their proclamations is. They can be wrong a thousand times in a row, and it does not slow their roll for the thousandth and first time they're going to go out and make another proclamation. Right. And I, I got this through COVID. I got everybody up there on MSNBC and Sanjay Gupta and, and Anderson Cooper and Don Lemon. All these assholes were wrong all the way through every step of the way. They got everything wrong, and then went out there, bold faced, stared into the camera lens, and went for it again. Yeah. And never backpedaled, never did a thing where, you know, you're sitting at a po you're sitting at a blackjack table and you get dealt like you get thirteen and fourteen dealt to you like five times in a row, mm. and the dealer's showing a face mm. card. And at some point, you got to get up and go. I, I, that, don't look at me. I, not, you know, when someone goes, "I got 16, He's got a face card. Should I hit? I just go. Don't. You're talking to the wrong guy because all I got is everything wrong at right. this table. Right. They never did it. They plowed forward. They made proclamations that were 100% wrong over and over and over again. Never apologized, never backpedaled, never stopped. And it did not slow them up at all. No. They went three and a half years of Russian collusion, ended up being wrong, didn't, didn't slow the roll at all. Because to them, the ends justify the means. So they feel that they can do anything and they just keep moving the goalposts because they need the end result to be what they want it to be. Just like these idiots that I see wearing masks still to this day. I mean, a lady in the airport had three masks on. And I'm like, at this point, you are just insane. But what happens is she bashed all of her family, told people they couldn't come over the house. You can't see the grandkids. And they bludgeon people all this time. And then now everybody knows that it's bull crap, but they cannot let that go because they hold on to that memory of crapping on people all this time. And the same thing happens with Russia collusion. People remember how they gave the middle finger to their grandmother because they thought she was a right wing extremist because she said there's no evidence of Russian collusion. And they, they instead of being humble and having the emotional intelligence to say, I probably should apologize, they can't. It would just ruin their whole reputation and their whole being to say, I'm sorry, I was wrong. And, and this happens. This is the Trump derangement syndrome development. There are people that I know that know that they messed up. Even your boy, I want to say your boy, you probably don't like him. Or not, the Rock. Mm. The Rock came out with his bald head and made a proclamation that he's going for Joe Biden because he's going to change America. And then the man now is saying, I'm not endorsing him. Do you like the way that America's going? I don't. I think it's going wrong. Just say I messed up. Well, to be fair, and to um, show that The Rock really doesn't have any dignity, <laughs> he's just licking his finger and figuring out which way the wind was blowing. And if you wanted to operate in Hollywood and you wanted to work in this town, and it was four years ago, and you said, I'm supporting Trump, you'd be destroyed. So you say, I'm... Because The Rock is really a politician without being a politician. He's doing all the stuff a politician would do all the time. What 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 side of this, you know, like, like okay, we went through COVID. 
There wasn't a human being in Hollywood beside me, <laughs> and I'm barely in Hollywood, who said, pump the brakes. What are we shutting everything down? Mm -hmm. I don't have any evidence of this. We shouldn't be shutting down the beaches. We shouldn't be shutting down the schools. We've got to reopen the schools. We've got to reopen the playgrounds. We're hurting kids. Ivermectin, that's between you and your doctor. Hydroxychloroquine, that's between you and your doctor. I'm not an expert. I'm an actor. There's nobody in Hollywood that had one word to say that was con that would be contrary to what the theme was. Did they all believe it? Fuck no, they didn't all believe it. Or they wouldn't have gotten on airplanes. They wouldn't have traveled. They wouldn't have gone on boats. They wouldn't have gone out to dinner. They wouldn't have hung out with Gavin Newsom at SoFi Stadium yeah. and Magic Johnson. No, they didn't believe it. Yeah. They're constantly... Hollywood people are like politicians who never stop running. They never stop. And they're smart because you got to take this career and you got to try to stretch it out over about 40, 50 years. And all you have to do is get on the wrong side of these people right. and you're out, baby. There's no second act for you. Your phone stops ringing, you stop going to the parties and you stop getting cast and stuff. So The Rock is a politician who's constantly running and never stops running. Well, now what's The Rock doing? Well, he's going to the UFC fights. He's in on the UFC stuff. He's in on the wrestling. And he sees what the reaction is when Trump enters the arena <laughs> with the UFC fans. So now, magically, The Rock, who has a ton of integrity, has had a little change of heart. Because now it's different. If he starts saying, I endorse Biden now, when he walks down at the UFC fight with 30,000 people in it next time, he's going to get booed. <laughs> so... What does he know? What does he care? Did he like Biden? First off, Biden is the, one of the least impressive people ever. And I, and I include family members in that, in that group. That's how bad it is. There, he's anything but impressive, right? I mean, even before the dementia and whatever it is kicked in, flip-flopping on every single item ever. His son, his brother, I mean, the family, the, the kids, the... Uh, shell co corporations and all, all these companies and, uh, you know, it's all, there's nothing impressive. There's nothing impressive. I mean, I, you know, I, you know, Obama said he was a fuck up, you know, other guys have said every single foreign policy he's ever made has been wrong, you know, like he's not <laughs> impressed. So why are you that? Right. Why is the rock? The rock is an impressive guy. So why is he impressed with Biden even four years ago? He's not. Right. He's just doing whatever he thinks is expedient for him, and he never stops running for election. Yeah. Politicians take a little time off, or they do two terms and they're out, or whatever it is. The Rock's been running for election for 30 years, and he's got another 20 years to run for election. So He's a lifer. He's a lifer, <laughs> so go ahead. He's going to come down on the popular side of everything, and now he knows which way the wind is blowing. Could this be a, but, but could this be an indication that the wind is actually blowing away from Biden and towards Donald Trump? Yeah, for him to make that's that. What, that's I mean, what the, that's is, why is the Rock the, is doing yeah, it. Yeah, is he an indicator was, of, of a bigger thing? Yeah, I was going to cover this in news. I mean, we have the clip of him of him saying that he uh, regrets endorsing Biden. Right, because it's safe to say it now. Well, well he, he also, said he's polarizing. He, yeah. he said he's made him polarizing, and he don't want to be that. Right, and he also said that he believes that the American people are going to make the right decision in this election, and whoever they vote for, that's going to be my president. That's right, gonna he's go not going to go toward Trump, even though he probably favors Trump, because right. that could get him run out of Hollywood. <laughs> So, but you would think a man, he's the most followed man in the world. I mean, he's probably one of the most popular people in the world. And you would think that somebody like that would drop his sack a little bit and say, I'm going to make a declaration of what I think the country should be. And who cares? I got F you money. I got F you status. Will really somebody cancel The Rock? I, I don't. That dude brings in so much money. I don't think people can afford to not have him to be a part of, of what they're doing. I mean, see, I think the only part you're missing here is the money is, yeah, he has, F, well, he has what, what's he, I like to call F me money, which is more than F you money. You can, Elon Musk has F me money. Right. When you buy Twitter for $45 billion and it's worth $18 billion <laughs> because you want to take control of it, that's called F me money. So that's, that's what he does. But now, you're right. 
But you also, and everyone should understand this, you can't see everything through the lens of money because all of the people we're talking about have enough money to get them through the rest of them li- the, their lives. You know, when we're talking about, you, know, you could be talking about Spielberg or Bill Gates or whatever, they don't, they want to be invited to the next party. Mm-hmm. They love be, they love being popular, they love mm-hmm. being the toast of the town, and they love being invited to the next party. And if you come out and endorse Trump, the next party you're going to be invited to has Kevin Sorbo and Scott Bale <laughs> at, at a punch bowl with Sherbert in it. <laughs> and it doesn't have all the cool kids. And so everybody is rich, and nobody needs money. They like it, but they don't really need mm. any more money. It's all about the party. I, but you know, you would think that, and I agree with you a thousand percent. See, I've never been that popular, so that does make sense that that he probably would think that way, and that they all are rich. I, I just wonder, like, it, you you've made a great point in saying that he really don't care. This is about you know where's the wind blowing, because he could, if he actually cared, if he actually endorsed Biden the first time that he would just articulate that these are the things that I look for when I'm going to vote the next time. He don't have to say Trump. He could at least point out the end of wars or whatever the other stuff, taxes. and and yeah. but, he, but you make the argument that I agree with that he I think he's disingenuous from the onset. Yeah, well, it's also when you talk about what you want, you will get put into a camp. So that's that's what happened with COVID. So you go, listen, I'm not an anti-vaxxer. I just got a 14-year-old healthy son, and I don't want him to get an experimental vaccination because he doesn't need it. And, uh, you know, I'm not an anti-masker, but I'm not wearing a mask alone walking on a horse trail. And they go, oh, we got a Trump vote. Yeah, yeah, Don't don't we now? And then you go, no, 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 I'm not not talking about politics. I'm talking about science. I go, okay, I got you. I hear you. But I almost think he put himself in the category, right? I mean, a lot of conservatives come out, and I even made a video about it, but does he put himself in the category of, wait a minute, are you supporting Trump this time? Because he didn't say it, but he said it in so many words. I'll tell you you my little rule. If you want to know if a Hollywood person is conservative or going to vote Republican— Just look for the ones who never say anything about politics, because the ones that are all leftists, they're blowhards that never stop bloviating and never stop running their mouth and never stop being wrong. The ones where you never hear anything political, those are the quiet, because what what they do is they go, I'm Republican and I'm a Trump voter. But I can't say anything. I'll be destroyed. On the other hand, I'm not going to go stump for Biden because that would crush my soul. So then there's a third box, which is say nothing. Mm -hmm. And the say nothing people are always the sort of quiet conservatives. It's also interesting that The Rock announced that he regretted Biden's decision on Fox. Did yeah, you see that? like he, mm-hmm. would, he, yeah. would he have done that on CNN or? MSNBC? Yeah, that's interesting. Well, he would have done it on CNN if CNN had higher ratings, probably. <laughs> I mean, that maybe and maybe not. Also, they looked like he was drinking a little tequila, so that could have loosened his tongue and, up a little know, bit. But they know they know what he's going to say. It's not like you go on Fox and they have no idea what the interview is going to be. I'm pretty sure they knew he was going to have some opposing things to say about Biden. So they like, oh, perfect. This is great. This is a great opportunity to take advantage of that, even on the Fox side. So, but yeah, I, I think that's interesting. I, I, I'm, I'm saddened that we don't have men that are strong enough. Because if he'd have done the Elon Musk approach and put it out there in front of the world with with the opportunity of losing it all that man could change america if if the rock came out and said i'm voting for trump i think he probably it's a death blow in hollywood but everybody around the world would say wait a minute i think so highly of that guy he's smart i believed him last time he was honest about the fact that it didn't work maybe i'll open Maybe I'll consider listening to Trump at least once this year. Well, you know, this is the problem I've said many times, steering it back toward the black community, which is the LeBron Jameses and the Obamas and the Oprahs, if they would come out and say, look, 
this is the best country in the world if you're black. And there's a reason why black people from around the world are trying to get here. Nigerians are black and they're kicking ass in this country. You don't have a target on your back. It's, it's even a playing field as we're gonna, if we're gonna make it. Now stop running around and playing the victim and get to work and raise your kids. If LeBron James and Oprah and goddamn Obama, because it's so disappointing with right. that guy, and him and Michelle turn out to be race hustlers, if all those people would rise up and say something, it would make such an impact, and they won't. Because they're cowards. They're, they're not only cowards, they're evil. Because they are living what we're talking about. Barack Obama, Michelle Obama, they didn't, I, I don't know if they came from a lot of money. They worked hard to get to a certain position in life. So did LeBron James. He was in the hood, you know, and everybody knew he was a star when he was in the eighth grade. But still, he came from humble beginnings. So he, it, let me just say this. There are all these black folks that talk about the white man being the enemy and that America is so bad. All they do is work with white people in America. Right. LeBron James. Now I looked it up, so I make sure I was factual about it. I think his lawyers and his agent are black. But are you telling me that he's not doing business with white people? He don't have to. He's so rich, he can pick the biggest and brightest blacks and and raise them up and only do business with black people. But the dude know that that's not going to make him successful as it would if he opened the ram up to to work with anybody. And that's every black person. Every successful black person is either in behind the scenes or in front of the scenes working with white people. When you had BLM and the, the dumb lady who was running BLM, I wanted to call her a lesbian, but I'm not going to do it. But oh, she was she ended up taking money and buying real estate. Where would she buy real estate? She didn't go to Atlanta. She didn't go to places where it's in, in uh, Maryland, where it's primarily black. She went to the whitest areas that you could possibly think of to spend that Black Lives Matter money to do it. Topanga the, Canyon. They're so they're so disingenuous. I and, know. And listen, Adam, it, you you are you are ten thousand percent right. If they would just come out and give a positive message, even if they didn't believe it, because they don't believe some of the stuff they say, the world would be different. I, every young... Listen, when I was in college, you know, we were brainwashed into black culture, right? I mean, you know, I was on a football team and all the black players were together and we would listen to rap music and just fall into that culture. I mean, I sagged my pants in, in college. I had gold teeth in my mouth. I was buying into that whole thing. If somebody in that area whom we attached our identity to would just say, man, America ain't racist. You just need to work hard. You need to, you need to be accountable. Don't have children out of wedlock. You should get married. Marriage is one of the greatest things that ever happened to you. I, God is my witness. Probably about 40% of black America would think completely different. Yeah. Generations of people would change. No, I Oprah... You can even throw the rock in there, but um, certainly the Obamas and um, and and uh, LeBron and, and many other athletes, if they just did it, instead you get Colin Kaepernick, who's just <laughs> hammering checks from Nikes and hustling race, and people are listening to his dumb ass. And it could change. And by the way, you know who you'd be saving? A lot of black lives. 100%. Tons of black lives. If you just start talking about marriage and not having kids out of wedlock and family and education and how we don't live in a racist nation, you'd literally be saving tens of thousands of black lives every year, but right. they won't do it because Adam, they're, they're, they want to go to the next party. Right. And Adam, the thing is, too, and I think you understand this, there's power in positive thinking. There, there's there's power in visualizing success. There's power in that. The way you feel, the way you think can be an arbiter of your success. And when you grow up black in America, you are so defeated as a kid because the white man is controlling everything. White kids are not thinking about black kids. I don't think they are. They don't. They're not raised and being worried about where the black kid, where the black people are at. They focusing on their life. They got other things to deal with. But as a black kid, your whole life is surrounded by what white people are doing, what they're not doing, their approval or the lack thereof. And you you grow up thinking I'm less than because the white man on the hill stole from my ancestors to get to that position, not knowing that most entrepreneurs and millionaires they are not you know um, trust fund babies. 
And so when you wake up every day, you feel defeated. You think defeated. When you see a black man is successful, he's telling you you're defeated. And how do you then act when your subconscious and your mind is negative? And that alone is destroying young black people. You get to a job interview and you already start because the business is full of white people. The head people are all white. You start by saying, I'm not going to get this job, man, because the white people ain't going to let me be, get the job. Just changing the mind of young black people will change the culture tremendously. But when you're in a slump and you hate everything and all the white people hate you, you're never going to make it. And then you start turning on your own brothers and sisters and then you kill them because that's normal to you. And then they hate on you. There was a thing that's that a, a guy had made mention in our, and I, um, this is wholeheartedly the truth. And it probably happens with anybody that becomes successful. He spoke about how he had survivor's guilt. He said survivor's remorse, but I think he meant survivor's guilt. When he left the hood and made a lot of money, he felt bad because he left all his people behind. And he would go back. And when he was, he said he would destroy himself in order to fit in. So he would take drugs. And when he was high and he was losing it, the, the people in the hood loved him. And they go, oh, what's up, man? I, I love you, man. Keep your head up, man. They, they talk when he's feeling good about himself and he's healthy. They, oh, man, you tr you think you're better than us? And that's what happens to LeBron James. I think he's an idiot, but but you got to think LeBron James came from all of this poverty, and now he the man. And Colin Kaepernick, to a certain degree, right? He he's coming up in this beautiful white family. They took care of the man. They gave him everything he needed to be successful. He almost won the Super Bowl when he had a fresh haircut like mine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then what happens, he dates this black girl that brings out the black side, and then he has survivor's guilt, meaning I don't even care about my own people. I left them. I'm only addressing my white side. And now he got to overcompensate. Now he got to be extra black and grow his hair out because he's abandoned his own roots. And that theology and mentality – it's hard to overcome, but I'm hoping that over time with people like myself and other black, Larry and other black people. Larry Elder. Yeah, Larry Elder. Not Larry Bird. Yeah, not Larry Bird. Different dude. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, he's uh, interchangeable to me. Yeah, 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 I know. It's just so, I guess I'm so disappointed in the Obamas. I did just feel like they could have made such a difference and they got elected and then they got the hustle and they went, they went to becoming race hustlers, and it's just but they the question could have made such an impact. The question is why. So it's not so much as they did it. It's like why would they do it? You know why? Why wouldn't they? They could. They know that they could have been the change that America needed. Well, we thought that they were going to be the change that America needed because it, it's it's not a race thing, but also it did take down the defense mechanism of most people in America saying, look. Some of those who felt that America's racist, okay, now they're not. Right. Some people that felt that America wasn't racist, but we kind of needed to right the wrongs or make it clear that everybody has opportunities in this country. That was a statement. I cried when Obama got elected. Um, as a young black man, I was like, wow, there's black in the White House, black family. Uh, uh, uh. And I did not realize that he was the worst thing that ever happened to race relations. And you look at the statistic, the statistics, race relations dropped from 20. 12 to 2013 and on it's just been declining yeah and it's because of these fools well in part what I, well, yes what i've always said is is we lived under this myth that we lived in a racist country and all the hustlers and the, the lebron james's and the oprah's and all the aforementioned al sharpton jesse jackson you know that's that's the hustle msnbc seen that that's their entire business and then the second we elected a black president for a second term especially, <laughs> they all went, okay, we gotta go into overdrive now because right. this is flying in the face of our message. We're saying this is a racist country and we just elected a black president. Yeah. Now, it wouldn't work for any country. It wouldn't work in Indonesia if you said, oh, they hate Moroccans in Indonesia and then they, they elected a Moroccan president, you'd go, well, that doesn't feel, <laughs> that doesn't feel like they're that racist against Moroccans in Indonesia. So we screwed with their theme and they, like any good business people, they had a meeting and they hit it. They came back harder. You know what I mean? They they basically said, uh, geez, uh, sales of Coca-Cola are dropping off. 
Coke for dinner, Coke for breakfast. You know what I mean? Like they, that's when Coke for breakfast came came along. Cereal for for dinner, says Kellogg's. You know what I mean? They started hitting it real hard because people were looking around and they're patting themselves on the back and they're going, I guess we're not really not that racist a country yeah. after all. And all the hustlers went, oh, whoa, whoa, our business is drying up. Our yeah. theme is going to hell in the handbasket. Now let's triple down. So find me some tape of some black mm-hmm. man getting punched by a white cop or whatever, yeah. and let's go to town on it. So all we did is ramp it up. Right. Because the people that are setting the narrative couldn't let go of their narrative, and their theme was in jeopardy because yeah. we elected this guy for two terms. All right, we need to take a quick break. We've got some news. We'll come back with Brandon Tatum. The Officer Tatum Show. It's on YouTube. And we'll do all that right after this. In the spirit of Murrow, Jennings, Cronkite, here's another Great moment in local news. A former Fort Wayne mayor is getting some national attention. Thousands of people voted online to name the new city county building in his honor. But that probably won't happen because of his name. News Channel 15's Don Austin is here to explain. Well, Heather, Mark, the people voted, and the top pick so far with more than 10,000 votes is the Harry Balls Government Center. Harry Balls was the mayor of Fort Wayne back in the 1930s and 40s. He even served a term in the 1950s. We have a street named after Harry Balls, so what's the big deal? That's a great moment in local news. Now, back to the Adam Carolla Show. Brandon Tatum is hanging out. The Officer Tatum shows on YouTube. And um, I forgot you were safety in college. And then there's Jack Tatum. Yeah. <laughs> you probably know because of your name, but I never. Uh, it's a good name for safety. Well, you're right. And, and people have made that connection a long time ago. We, we weren't able to really verify. It, it was rumored that he, he was our great uncle. Mm, um, and famous we believe, and, Oakland, right? Defensive back and enforcer. And the funny thing is, the I was in the NFL draft in 2010, and because now, if I had my career the way it should have went, meaning I played every season or whatever, I probably would have been drafted in the first round. That's how great of an athlete I was. However, I didn't play at all in college, but I was still in the NFL draft because I was such a great athlete. The Oakland Raiders were. Why the didn't team. you play in college? I, I got hurt my redshirt sophomore year. I had a terrible attitude. And I think my coaches were were slightly lunatics. Um, they were they weren't good coaches, man. They didn't know how to really formulate talent. We had so much talent that they didn't play certain people, and it was a whole host of things. Some of it was my fault though, because when I was a freshman, I came from Dunbar High School in the hood, and I had such a terrible attitude, and I did not know how to receive coaching. So mm. the coaches weren't like players' coaches; they were just cuss you out, MF you every day, get in your face, yell at you, get the f- out of here, and it was just a bunch of chaos. And I couldn't handle that. I was like, and my dad don't even talk to me like this. What, what y'all? And I don't want to fight the coaches and stuff. And that started me off on, on kind of like a bad trajectory. Mm-hmm. And then I got hurt my sophomore year, season in the injury in the third game. And they just, I was in a doghouse ever since. Although I was probably the greatest athlete on the team, with that being said, in 2010, even though I didn't play much, I think I played a couple special teams, I, Oakland Raiders were going to draft me. They told mm-hmm. my agent that they were going to draft me. And so that would have been really cool if I could have went to the Oakland Raiders as a safety, you know, in the legacy of Jack Tatum. And uh, I was much bigger than him. And, and yeah, I, could, I don't think that I, big a guy. No, but he'll hit you. Yeah. And I could hit, but Jack Tatum was on another level. I mean, he paralyzing people. You you can't you couldn't do that today in today's game. Yeah, he paralyzed Daryl Stingley. Yeah. Yeah. Which was horrifying. But yeah, preseason. Back in the back in the day, yeah. Ronnie Lott, you come across the middle, they're gonna put you oh, to sleep. There's a lot of Chuck Cecil. Yeah, a lot Chuck of those Cecil. guys. <laughs> All right, we got some uh news. Yeah. So there's this LA restaurant. I don't know if you've been there, it's called Perch. It's on a rooftop on mm-hmm. uh, the Pershing Square building. So um, a lot of people are concerned with them because they just added a new surcharge to their bills, 4.5% for a security fee. Mm. Yeah. And, yeah, people are upset about this because they're saying, look, we have to do it. We're on a rooftop. We need extra security here. They're not, they're not saying exactly why, mm-hmm. but they're just saying we have multiple floors on our restaurant. We need the extra security, and you got to pay it. Well, everything that we do 
and everything that goes wrong gets just passed along. So right. when they go, we're going to raise the minimum wage to $20, and we're going to have this, and we're going to have free this or low. It's like, yeah, all right. Then whoever the, whatever the business is, they'll just pass it. Right. They just pass it along. You know what? I, I, I Okay, let me tell, tell me what you guys think of this. I was going to Vegas uh, last week, and I was at the Burbank Airport, and I went by Guy Fieri's kiosk, and I bought a turkey sandwich. Those pre-made turkey sandwiches. Prefab turkey sandwich. The turkey. You know what they need? They need a little microwave to get it to room temp because when it's cold, when sourdough bread gets cold, it tastes shitty and it gets chewy. You need to. You need to just bring it up. Bring it up to room temp. But anyway, um, turkey sandwich, a bag of chips comes with it. Perrier, bottled Perrier, thirty dollars and like twenty nine cents. We're thirty dollars. All right. <laughs> then when I go to check out, it's just a kiosk in the airport. So it's a stand, and a guy's just standing there. Punch the thing in. Eighteen percent, twenty two percent, twenty five percent. No zero. No ten percent. No twenty. Just 18, 22, like 25%. Now I'm just standing there. And also, the, the Officer Tatum will get my... You know what I've told... I used to tell my uh, ex-friend David Allen Greer. I'd say to him all the time, for every person that is racist in the society, there's 1,000 people bending over backwards trying to be 100%. nicer to black people to yeah. prove we don't live in a racist 100%. society. So I'm just sitting there, standing there staring at the black chick, and if that's a redheaded dude, you get nothing. Yeah. But, uh, but it's like, oh, shit. So I got to give 18% on 30 bucks for a sandwich. I come back, and uh, for the first time in seven years, I go to Taco Bell. I go to Taco Bell to get myself a bean burrito. <laughs> I'd earned it. And I go to pay, and it's like $10 for two bean burritos or whatever. But there's no tip. There's just pay. Why is there a tip everywhere? I would tip fast food. Right. I would be happy right. to give. I mean, I'm looking at this woman behind the counter, 40 years old, mm. heavy set, beleaguered, rough life. I would be more than happy to throw her eight bucks for her for her troubles. There is no, there should be tipping in fast food, and we should remove it from the airport. Where you're already getting gouged. I'm already paying thirty bucks for a turkey sandwich. You're doing the work too. You're picking it. You're, I'm picking it you're up. Picking it up. Yeah. I had to point it. at the chips I wanted. Yeah. That was a calorie burner. That's, you might as well sign the W nine. I had to get the drink they out of the tip, thing. They should have tipped you, man. I know. I'm fueling that sandwich. Back. I brought the sandwich to them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what the hell were we talking about? Oh, oh so, yeah. yeah. They're Security just gonna. Charge. The LA is just gonna be one of those things where they're just gonna keep tacking everything onto everything because everything's getting more expensive, and this is this is just the way it goes. But I hope that I hope that people are kind of looking at this as Calif what California does versus what places like Arizona do. You know, let me bring my own gun, and then you don't have to charge. Matter of yeah. fact, I should get like twenty percent off if I come in here with my gun, because <laughs> I'm going to save some lives if something goes south. So I, I think that people should should understand that we talk about this all the time in the economic sense is that they're going to pass the money down. It's no way if if they if you put. If you knew how much they were bringing in and you calculated 4% of that, that's way more than it costs to have security there, potentially. So what are they really using the money for? We know you, minimum wage is this, so they got to add little fees in there. Even they do the service charge. It's like, and I don't know if they do it at that restaurant, but they have it at certain hotels. And it's like, well, wait a minute. I, I kind of like when they do the service I, charge because I don't feel like trying to put my money out and do all this. But some people, the service is better than others. So I w I w maybe I want to give more than 20% to this person. I, I agree. This is all part of my money's invisible thing. All the Apple Pay and all the scan this and all that, they just keep tacking on little bits and pieces. When you got to pull out cash and pay for a bill, you feel <laughs> you feel what you're paying. Yeah. You know what I mean? When you just swipe or, or dab or print or pop or push it, it's like you just it's just all digital yeah. oh yeah it's all digital what it did for the gambling industry yes oh long my long god I can't even yeah. imagine um so this weekend is the 2024 masters mm -hmm. uh, and tiger woods at the moment is expected to play he's already flown in early 
Um, he ha- he it has been said that uh, by his friend that he's working really hard in the gym. He's eating right, and he's also eliminated sex mm. to prepare. <sighs> Uh, keep himself in focus. Now, once again, uh, keep in mind, Mike Tyson once said that he went five years without sex. <laughs> really? His prime fighting years. Muhammad Ali said he would abstain from sex six weeks before bouts. Oh, Muhammad Ali? Yeah. All so right. they, this, this, is a, this is an urban myth. Plus, he was on top of the world when he was banging all those cocktail waitresses <laughs> from Hooters. Like, right, yeah. He's got a math issue. He shouldn't stray from what's <laughs> He worth. should be straying. Yes. I yeah. don't. There's a there's a concept, and I haven't dabbed into it, but I, I've heard a couple people talk about semen retention, mm. and that is somehow a, a real spiritual thing. It's kind of like fasting or something of that nature, where people use it in a spiritual sense. I there's no scientific proof. I I don't think that would suggest that if you don't have sex, that somehow you perform, you have a clearer mind. It would be assumed that God made us with enough to populate planets well look so at you our, probably should be able to i mean lauren that. lawrence taylor would go out whoring the night before <laughs> <laughs> the big game and get three and a half sacks right so maybe he could have got five if he didn't <laughs> well maybe it was the drugs i don't know yeah. but, the, but the horn it, or the drugs it's also this um golf is a you know it's 80 percent psychological I mean, all these guys can drive the ball 300 yards. They can all, they all have the physical tools mm-hmm. to put the ball in the hole. It's so much, it's mental. Right. It's a mental That's game. So if you think, you know, if I said to a golfer, I invented a pill. It's called the great golfing pill. You take it, and it's going to take 10 strokes off your game, and it was just a sugar tablet. Right. I bet they take some strokes off just because it's a placebo effect. Mm-hmm. So I think that maybe you're doing it for a psychological, you know, the psychological for, edge. Yeah. Yes. That's what I'm I, they, I, I mean, sports psychologists are a big thing now. They're all right, sports right. psychologists just to get them in the, in the zone. Right. Mentally. So yeah, it could be a thing. Um, Seattle, the mm. public schools have dismantled the gifted and talented program. Mm, yeah. Which administrators argued was oversaturated with white and Asian students. <laughs> yeah. In favor of a it. more inclusive, equitable, and culturally, culturally sensitive program. Yeah. Never going to work. Well, let me, let me add to this because I cannot confirm or deny that my oldest son goes to a school in, in the state of Washington. I went to his school and I almost lost my mind. I went into the school, and he's in eighth grade. I went into the school. I go to his math class, which is the class that he's struggling in the most. I want to see, meet the teacher, see what she's doing in the class. Is it my son? He's not just in there effing around, or is it something going with the teacher? She was out. First thing I see on the wall is Palestine points. Oh, boy. So if you get an A, she donates money. To Palestine oh, on your behalf. Wow! Wow! In the back of the room is a pride flag that's the size of this panel right here. Pride flag, like four by eight foot or five by eight foot. And then, of course, every it seems unified that every teacher has to have the American flag, and it's probably this little right, right. above their desk. But the pride flag is prominent. Then a gay wall, and then in front of every in front of every classroom is a rainbow, like a it's like a little statement and each statement has a color and it's the rainbow look like the pride flag rainbow right. and it says we are inclusive we are anti-racist and, and stuff like that on every classroom door this classroom is and it goes down and while i was in the math class kids are completely stupid in the class and i and i'm not trying to be mean to anybody's kids they're doing stuff on a computer, and I look, and the kid don't know his don't know her mathematic m- mathematics on a basic level. She had no idea what was going on. Some of the kids didn't even log in the computer, did zero work. Why are they focused on stupid stuff when they should be focused on teaching these kids and getting them up to par? Even one of the teachers it told me that they think that the kids should have been held back during COVID. Oh yeah, because they didn't go to school at all. And if your parents were illiterate, you didn't do anything when they had you stay from home because my son had to go from home and do it on a computer. Now, I'm college educated, and so is his mom. So we could help him get through his homework at home. But if you're a parent that's illiterate or you're working on a job, your kid is sitting there losing his 
his entire education. Two years of this. How do they not let the kids go back and kind of relearn that? Well, Instead of they just pushing them out and they're, and they're ignorant. So, all right. This is a good day to bring this up because um, this day, which is uh, we're taping this on Monday, is the craziest day. All Every one of these Mondays drive me nuts. And I have this conversation with my kids every time. They just had nine days off for Easter. They had Saturday, Sunday, then the whole week. Spring break. Oh, yeah. They just took nine days off. And then when I see them Sunday night, I go, well, back to the salt mine. And they go, oh, we don't got school tomorrow. No. And I go, I, why don't you have school tomorrow? And they go, well, we don't do the Monday. They don't do the Mondays after the holidays. And I'm like, you just had nine days off. And I say to them, what is Monday? What? Why? Why not go back to school? And they go, well, that's the teacher free. Ding, 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 yeah. They do what? that day. Listen yeah. to me. Teachers don't want to work. I've said this a million times. I saw it all through COVID. They didn't want to go back. They didn't. They're no different than any other American. If, if look, take essential workers. Take people who work at Trader Joe's. If I walked into the stock room and I said, "Who doesn't want to be here today?" They would all <laughs> raise their hand, and then I'd go, "Well." You're not going to get paid if you don't come in today. They'd put their hands back down. And right. then I said, but what if you would get paid like you were here, even if you weren't here? They'd all raise their hand again yeah. and leave. The, the American dream is to get paid and not show up. <laughs> and teachers share that. Also, yeah. the public school is a little bastion of, of socialism. It's the one place where competition, and they don't they don't want the competition. Right. So they're anti-charter school, and they're, they're anti-competition. School unions are anti-competition. Mm -hmm. They don't want it. Also, they did a little... So you have people that have dropped out of the system and bought into socialism to a degree. Mm -hmm. Where you go, look, you want to go out and start your own business, you want to deal with employees, you want to deal with OSHA, you want to deal with taxes, you want to deal with all that stuff, or I'll guarantee you $52,000 a year and you don't, never have to work mm -hmm. in a summer. And you'll get tons of time off. And after having nine days off for Easter, we'll give you the Monday off. And they go, I'll buy into this. <laughs> they're little bits, they're little bastions of socialism. Yeah. So what are they going to teach? Yeah. When, when they're there, and it's predominantly women, so what are they going to teach? So you have predominantly left-leaning women. What are they going to teach when they go into the classroom? They're going to keep it all close to the vest. They're not going to let any of, their, any of their political ideas sneak out. Now they're being encouraged. Yeah. Also, somebody figured out about 10 minutes ago, they go, look, why are we waiting to brainwash these kids? Why are we waiting until they get to college? Right. Let's hit them in junior high. 100%. Start washing that brain. Say it all the time. I said it during COVID. You want to crate train your dog. You got to crate train a puppy. You can't crate train a middle-aged dog. It doesn't work. It's too late. Yeah. Get them when they're puppies. Start the crate training. That's what's going on. That's why you're seeing all the flags and all this percent. stuff. And then, as far as the test scores go, don't worry about that. Because when these kids start failing, we'll just eliminate the test scores. We'll call it racist. So we'll get rid of the system altogether. And we'll all be fine. Take your kids out of school. Me and, me and the wife with our youngest son, because I have a child with another person. And, and that was from 13 years ago. But me and my wife, we, our youngest son, we will not let him go to public school. We're going to homeschool him because they are washing the brains of your kids and they're being stupid and they learn all this crazy stuff. These kids are out of control in the school system. And, and, and you know what? I feel bad for the teachers, too, because some of them probably don't want probably don't have intentions to be communist idiots. They are getting bludgeoned in the school. The kid come to school and just tell you, you, I'm not doing anything. Right. And they can't do nothing. Right. Shut up, lady. You can't tell me what to do. You're not my mom. You be, and they be on his phone. And, and the teacher got to say, I have to disrupt the education of everybody in here and accommodate to this one kid that don't have a daddy at home. Right. This is this is what the school system is. Like when I was in that class, the teacher didn't say anything to anybody, man. I, I almost said something. I was like, oh, hold on, man. Log in your computer or you're going to be an idiot when you grow up. And this guy was just, oh, you didn't log in yet? It's Listen, we're 40 minutes into the class. Well, they've also decided that, again, it's, it's a death knell. 
of, of a group. They go, well, black children are being disproportionately <laughs> disciplined and expelled, so let's just get rid of that. Right, right. Which all it does is hurt the kids, all yeah. it does is hurt the teachers, all it does is hurt the kids that are trying to learn. Right. This notion, I, I, I always say, or I just started saying, it's like you have a, a defective airplane, an airplane has problems, and you blame the ground right. for the accident. Right. Okay, you can blame the ground all you want. You can go, well, if the ground didn't exist, then the plane would never hit anything. <laughs> but you're never going to solve the problem of right. this defective plane if you're blaming the ground. Right. And that's what they do. Everything is backwards. So it's like, there's too many people being arrested. We'll defund the police. Right. And there's too many kids being suspended of color. Well, then stop suspending kids of color. And there's too many p kids of color and uh, males of color in prison. Well, then don't put them in prison. Like, right. okay, then get rid of the ground. Right. It's really right. what right. you're saying. And all it turns into is a shit show. It never works. There's no math where it can ever work. You getting rid of test scores or advanced programs or whatever because there's too many Asians in there because their families are intact and they focus harder on education. That'll never fix the problem. It's what's, it, it, what's happening is this constant re-election theology, right? You have people that are just running for getting hired or appointed, and so they don't care about actually taking the time to fix the problem. They want to get the numbers right so they look good to get the position. Because if you're a police officer and you're a police chief, Mayor Adams or one of these other people that are leading, what, what they would do is, and I'm saying Mayor Adams being the mayor, it, what they're doing is saying it's better for us to change how we classify burglaries because therefore, if we change the classification for burglaries, then therefore the numbers will show less burglaries. Or we don't arrest for burglaries if it's over a certain amount, or whatever the case may be, or theft over a certain under, amount. Right. So, or under a certain amount. You do that so your numbers are down. Then you can tout and say crime is down in the city. That's not the way it's actually happening. Crime is up. Cops are just not arresting anybody. They're not prosecuting anybody. Where is the numbers going? And the same thing in the school system. Instead of saying... Hey, we have an epidemic of fatherless homes. These young people have no direction. They're violent. They're emotional. They eat, they eat candy and sugar all day. They, they're going crazy. They're on their cell phones. Let's start honing in on those things and pull, drawing them back. And, and that's going to take some time. That's going to take some pushback from parents. But instead of doing that, they go, well, we just can eliminate the test scores. Therefore, everybody has passed. But the kids are, are, are stupid. I'm, I'm, Larry Elder was talking about this at the event we did last night at, at the Salem event. I, I'm, I'm just shocked that they're okay with, like, majority of young black people in America, 60%, can't even read at third grade level. Well, look. How are they okay with that? I've asked this, um, and we can find Biden in this clip about airline baggage fees or extra fees or whatever. I have asked a couple of black people where I go, every time Biden goes, these things affect poor people and people of color. I'm yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> aren't you offended by that? Yeah. <laughs> like you can't buy your own airline ticket yeah, it's or, stupid. or, and, and that there's two groups. Yeah. It's a, you now it affects Poor people and Jay Z and Beyonce, yeah. these airline tickets, yeah. like that you have your own category when he's up there going, you know, black entrepreneurs are just as smart as white entrepreneurs. Yeah, they just yeah. don't have access to lawyers or accountants. Yeah, or yeah, like, yeah. What? They don't. Yeah. I, I, what I want to say to the black community is why aren't you more offended by the way you're being treated and spoken to? Yeah. It's like what they call it the Stockholm syndrome. I, yes. I don't know if it's, it's like the, the people are sympathizing with their abuser. I, I I, I'm, let me just correct something because I said that black people can't read at third grade levels. No, the third graders are not reading at third grade levels. So I just want to mm -hmm. make sure I didn't say something crazy. Right. But no, I, I don't. I'm offended. I mean, I'm offended, but I don't give a f. Right. I mean, Ob Biden saying if you don't know who you're voting for, me or Trump, then you ain't black. Like I'm like, hey, bro, that's disrespectful to say something like that. Well, that's what I'm saying. I I don't think any of this ends until the black community starts stepping up and saying, yeah, but when are they gonna do it? <laughs> It's almost like the Titanic, you know, is know. this is what I say. I say the black community is like the Titanic sinking. You got to get as many out as possible, but you're not going to save it. That, it's worse. You look at the smashing grabs here in, in L.A. and different places. It, they, it's mostly black young people. And fatherlessness is not improving. 
No, These boys don't have no daddies, and they're not going to have dads. And then with fentanyl coming in, drug dealers are getting prosecuted for selling the fentanyl, which is a higher prosecution than you would have selling any other drug. Now it's a felony crime. They can't charge you with second-degree murder in certain counties, even in California, if you sell knowingly and intentionally selling somebody fentanyl, and they die. So you got more prosecution for fentanyl, and you got more people dying from ODN. It's like three dudes that I play football with died from ODN, and I know it was fentanyl. It wasn't nothing else. And so it's not going to get any better. And, 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 our, and our people who are prominent and successful, they just keep getting stupider. Even the one woman who just won the basketball championship, the black lady, the I forget, coach. South Carolina, the coach. Yeah. She, and I, and I don't know if you're friends with her or you like her or not, she just said in a press conference before they won the game that she's okay with biological men participating in female basketball. Yeah. They just get stupider and stupider. Kamala Harris, the, the the dumbest woman to ever live and be vice president. I agree. There's no, they're, they're not, we're not advancing. So uh, I Don, pray that it change, but I don't no, know if it will. I know it's regressing. Well, I'll play the clip, by the way, Biden, just because it always makes me laugh because he <laughs> separates poor people from people of color. And, and also, I like it because it's totally nonsensical. <laughs> I fly almost every weekend. Every weekend, I have the same conversation. <laughs> How much is first class? It's three thousand dollars. All right, that's too much. They have a business. They have a Coach Plus. What do you get in Coach Plus? Well, you get an extra six inches of knee room, and you may sit, might sit on the bulkhead. And I go, "How much is that?" They go, "That's sixty-four bucks more." And I go, "All right, let's do that." You know, it's all a discussion, but this is the greatest discussion ever. Look at him. He's looking, looking stupid. Decision. Some airlines, if you want six more inches between you and the seat in front, you pay more money. But you don't know it until you purchase your ticket. <laughs> Look, folks, these are junk fees. They're unfair, and they hit marginalized Americans the hardest, especially low-income folks junk and fees. people of color. And people of color. What so. is people, like, <laughs> I don't know why there's two groups. I never heard, first of all, I never heard this, and now hearing it is insane. <laughs> the airlines prey on people of color I fly, who are rich as well. I fly all the time. I mean, I, I'm, I got concierge key status in, at American Airlines. And... I've never had a conversation where I felt I was being discriminated against on the airlines. You can well, get this is over the computer. Yeah, <laughs> no, they know you're black by the yeah, way yeah. you type. <laughs> you misspell something. I guess oh, you poor black. You yeah. Know, like, oh, you wrote ax a k s. <laughs> no, it's a s. Ooh, ooh. Okay, we're gonna tack on yeah. some <laughs> service. But but, fees. But, but why would he? The thing is, is that I never. I always say I see that they do it, but why? Like, I don't know a black person that'll listen to that and be like, yeah, that's right. I am getting taken advantage of. Just like with the ID thing. Uh, that, I don't uh, know a black person that don't that have But the whole ID. point is it's a constant hustle. It's a constant yeah. hustle. And all it is, it, it's like, it's basically like, like if you had a, a teenager and the teenager was struggling a little with their weight. And I was like, son, we got to sit down and let's talk about your math, fat. And we want to yeah. talk about your teachers and we talk about long division chubby. And we want to yeah. talk about it's like it's a constant like, oh, wait a minute. Biden spoke for 11 seconds without riling up <laughs> black people like every <laughs> He's talking about airline garbage fees or junk fees, right? Which, first off, I really don't know what he's talking about because everyone buys that his description of it was insane. But he can't give he, – he has a microphone to speak into, and he'll never say anything into a microphone that doesn't have a little race right. hustle in it. Even if he's talking about ostriches at the zoo, it doesn't matter. He's talking about airlines. Yeah. What does that have to do with race? Yeah. And then why would you separate poor people from black people? Right. As if as if it's like now you can say he's all a race poor, hustler. One hundred percent. You can say all poor people. That would make sense. People that are low income. Well, but, 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 but then where does the black people like, come in? But, but, it's like him. Right, here's what this old fool saying. He's going, <laughs> look, you order ice cream, you order one scoop. It costs a dollar fifty, but you offer two scoops. And then that costs $3, and this disproportionately affects poor people. It's like, 
Well, no shit. <laughs> Everything did. I, hey, asshole, a parking ticket that's $61 disproportionately affects poor people than it does right. Elon Musk or Bill Gates. Uh, oh, by the way, gas at five fifty a gallon disproportionately affects poor people too, Joe. But yes, everything that costs more <laughs> disproportionately affects poor people because if you make twenty grand a month or you make two grand a month, you shall be disproportionately affected by the exact same burger charge of sixteen dollars. Right, right. But then you go and black people, yeah, and now you're into some weird racist zone and. You're calling American Airlines and Delta Airlines racist, essentially. Exactly. And you're living in some sort of weird world where somehow they know what your race is when you're booking tickets. Online. All right. Insane. Brandon, I, I'm sorry. You got me fired up. <laughs> got a whole second half of the show go with that. So I I, I went down to the uh, Reno Automobile Museum. The I, National Automobile The National Automobile Museum. Museum. I talked to the great Leno, uh, Jay Leno. I talked to Nell Newman, Paul Newman's daughter. And then James Cox is the guy who got the Rolex watch given to him by Paul Newman when he was a teenager and then later on sold it for $17.5 million. So he'll, he will tell that, yeah. that story in great detail. Brandon, uh, the Officer Tatum Show, love listening to your uh, program. Uh, you can uh, check it out on YouTube and uh, hear Sir. some truth. Yes, and then thank you so much for having me on. And yeah, if you guys want to hear the unadulterated truth uh, from a, a person who's a Christian and all of that, go follow the show.